Despite our internal desire to make some quick money of buying and selling stuff in the short term, trading is usually depicted as an act of gambling and investing is the way to go. Well, that's not exactly true. This man is George Soros. For those who don't know him, he has a net worth of $8.6 billion. And he is famous for single-handedly betting against the British pound, which was pegged at the time to the German mark and forced Bank of England to surrender. From that single trade, he profited $1 billion in 1992, which would be around $2 billion today. He is considered as one of the most famous traders of all time. And here's Warren Buffett, which doesn't need to be introduced. But we all know him as the most famous investor of all time. Now, apart from one of these two gentlemen eats a $2 breakfast menu from McDonald's every morning, is there too much of a difference in the way they approach their investments or trades? Surprisingly, not much at all. Once you understand both styles and know when to trade and when to invest, the combination of both styles can result in reduced risk and higher returns. In this video, we will explain to you how successful people make their money of both styles and determine which one suits you best. Welcome to Financial Interest, where you will learn everything you need to know about money and investing. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Now, the most entertaining form of trading looks probably like this, which to someone unfamiliar with the stock market, it probably looks more like this. And that's why one of them is called Trading Pit and the other one is called the Rock Concert Mosh Pit. Now, all this is far gone with machines taking over trading and K-pop taking over rock music. Trading shouldn't just be narrowed down to the stock market. It's essentially buying and selling an item in the short term in the hopes to make a profit. This can be all the way from flipping houses, NFTs, or even sneakers. For more on that, check out our last video. The main idea is that you have a belief that the price of an item will increase in value over the short term. And once the price comes to your desired level, you will sell the item and walk away with your profit. Sounds fairly simple, right? We all wish it was. As the nature of trading is in the short time frame, it bears some uncertainties. Simply because any unpredictable event will directly impact the outcome of your trade. Let's take the example of Nick Leeson, famously depicted in the movie The Rogue Trader. In short, he was trading heavily from the bank's books to cover his losses, until one last trade blew everything up. He placed a very large short straddle position in the Tokyo Stock Exchange, essentially betting that the Japanese stock market would not move significantly overnight. However, the Kobe earthquake hit early in the morning, sending Asian markets and Leeson's trading position into a tailspin, essentially making the bank lose $1.4 billion and resulting in Bering Bank, one of England's oldest banks to go bankrupt. The moral of the story is, in the short term, anything can happen. Well, why do people still trade if there's so much uncertainty? Simply because they believe to have an edge. Again, we're speaking of successful traders that have an established strategy. Once you have a working formula and you repeat it a large number of times, despite the short-term uncertainties, you can still make a good profit. Now, whether it is in the stock market or any other form of trading, if you know something that majority of the market participants don't, which in return gives you a higher probability of having a successful trade, you will naturally have a higher chance. Is this enough to be a successful trader? No. Unfortunately, having a working formula doesn't guarantee success in trading. There are two important points every successful trader applies to each one of his trades. First one is the correct position sizing, and the second one is time diversification. Our next video will be going into full depth on this topic. Don't forget to click that subscribe button so you don't miss out. The two concepts are essentially linked and simply mean that, despite your level of conviction on a single trade, never invest a large sum of your money on a single idea. Despite how small the probability of you losing money may be, there is always a chance, and you would not like to lose all the years of your savings on a single trade. Secondly, judge your trading success not on a few of your trades, but at least on 20 or 30 of them. If you have a proven strategy, your losing trades, which are inevitable and part of the game, are essentially the cost of doing business, like the sunk cost you would have in every business operation, like your rent. Trading in its nature is risky, and there can be many cases for successful traders to have a win-to-loss ratio of one or even below, which means that they have as many or even fewer winning trades than losing ones, which probably makes you wonder. Clearly, these guys don't have a statistical edge as they lose more often than they win but they have very clear 
and defined trading plans, and more importantly, they have very strong risk management practices. Trading, especially in the stock market, is just as psychological as it is technical. In order to eliminate their emotions dictating their trades, they follow very clear guidelines which they have mastered over the years. Now the reason why most people fail at doing this is because this type of trading is not suitable for everyone's nerves. People usually do the opposite of what they're supposed to do. They run their losses far past their stop loss limits and eventually having to cut them at huge losses. And they cut their winning trades way too early before their predetermined price target. Now there are many types of traders in the market using various strategies where each one of them have their unique risk and reward style which we won't be able to cover all in one video. Please let me know down in the comments below if you'd like me to cover more trading strategies in the future. Investing is very similar to trading, just with a longer time frame, which eliminates to a larger degree the short-term uncertainties we talked about in trading. Investing doesn't have to be bound just to the stock market. Anything with the intention of holding it over a year and selling it ultimately at a profit can be called investing. So any investment in real estate or even collectibles with a buy and hold mentality can be grouped under this category. Depending on the nature of your investment, it can get as risky as trading. For example, if you invest in the S&P 500 with a 5 year time horizon, you should expect to have on average a 7% annual return, which would be 40% over the next 5 years. Now that could be categorized on the safer end for an equity investment. Or you could buy and hold a biotech ETF for 5 years. The more niche and emerging the sector, the more you have a chance of hitting a home run, with the potential of making much more money than you would on your S&P trade. The S&P 500 investment could be fought as a residential housing investment in the middle of the city center, and the biotech ETF as a newly developed urban area project which is expected to grow. The higher the earnings potential of your investment, the higher the volatility it will have. In other words, throughout the five years, even if your biotech investment turns out to be a great success, it will probably experience a lot of ups and downs with large drawdowns far more than the S&P 500. Therefore, when you think about a long-term investment being safe or easy to manage, try to look into the main performance drivers of your investment. In simple terms, for the S&P 500, it would be the health of the American and world economy. For the biotech ETF, it would be the success of the clinical trials of the companies in the ETF. Now, the average drug takes around three years to be approved, with multiple clinical stages they need to pass. Every clinical stage could potentially double the stock if passed and half the stock if failed. Therefore, it would not be correct to categorize any long-term investment being less risky than any short-term trade. But the more correct approach would be to look under the hood and understand the main factors that ultimately determine performance, and more importantly, how realistic and probable the assumptions made for future returns. In the beginning, we talked about Warren Buffett and George Soros. Despite the general perception of the different approaches they have on investing, they have far more in common. One of the biggest commonalities between them two is that they never take anyone's advice before they have religiously studied the topic themselves. Once they get to an industry expert level on the topic, only then they reach out to expand on what they already know. The second biggest similarity is that they are both pretty risk averse. In other words, they defend the money they have with the highest of efforts. Their main motto is, keep what you have first and make money second. The reason why they think 10 times and act once is exactly for this reason. They don't feel rich enough just to take a punt on any investment. They never invest into anything that they're not fully convinced of. When Warren Buffett buys a company, he knows more about the management team and its financials than the company's CEO. In fact, he often talks to workers about what's going on in the company and not the corporate suits. On the other hand, Soros, the guy who broke the Bank of England, took a large short position on the British pound based on extensive economic study and accumulated that one position for months and months before the break. Soros didn't listen to the senior economists at the time, which argued that it would be all well for the British Commonwealth. He followed his own research and listened to what the economic numbers were telling him and not the rhetoric. We can all learn from these lessons of paying attention to risk first and not following gurus just because they claim to know it all. We as traders or investors need to do our own homework and truly understand what we are investing in. If you're further interested in the topic, I would highly recommend you to read The Winning Investment Habits of Warren Buffett and George Soros by Mark Teer. 
Let's answer the million dollar question. Should you be a trader or an investor or perhaps both? Now there are a couple considerations before you answer these questions for yourself. First of all, trading is much more flexible than investing. In other words, especially in the financial world, you can short an index or a stock and profit from the price going down. Or you believe that one sector or country has a better prospect in the current macroeconomic environment and expect another to perform poorly. You can simply have a relative value trade. Let's say you believe the US stocks are significantly overvalued and European stocks offer much better value. You can simply buy a European exposure ETF and also buy a short S&P ETF. So technically your net position is zero as you have bought $100 of each ETF and your profit and loss would be the performance differential between your European exposure ETF and the S&P. Even if the markets were to fall, as long as the European stocks fall less than the S&P 500, you'd still be making money. The second important consideration is that trading in the short term will be much more time consuming than a long term investment. It will require ongoing monitoring of your positions and the new slow that impacts it. A failure to do so will directly impact your performance. The third point to mention is, successful trading strategies can yield much more than just simply buying an index fund. But you have to consider two other important aspects, which are taxes and transaction costs. Now, depending on your trading strategy, you'll be buying and selling more frequently than you would with your long-term investments. So the additional commissions you would pay in your trading activities will reduce your returns. On the tax side, short-term trading profits are fully taxed. Whereas your long-term investments, especially made through a Roth IRA account in the US, are much more tax efficient. Before you initiate any trade or investment, take into account the points mentioned above. So it can be beneficial to have both long-term investments as well as short-term trades that you fully understand the risk and reward of. If you made it this far, I hope you enjoyed the video. I would love to hear your feedback down in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on our next video. I would appreciate it if you gave it a big thumbs up and I'll see you next week.